Hello everyone, and today I'm going to finally talk about Big Brother Canada 11, and it is definitely a weird season. Of course, we have to deal with the fact that there are no live feeds, and it makes it harder for us to get connected to the cast in general, especially with how the edit can easily ignore certain house guests so we don't get the full context of things. And as I'm recording this video, we still have to put together certain pieces because we weren't provided with all the information. But even outside of that, it was very noticeable that they wanted to make this cast very attractive, and it's definitely the most attractive cast in BB Can, and there are a lot of recruits on this season, which meant that a lot of them were not familiar with the game. And there were a lot of athletic men in the house, which made it easy to predict who the winner was, and while there was some conflict there, it was easy to see that they wanted an athletic male to win, especially with how the competitions were set up. The casting is honestly kind of middling now that I'm thinking about it, but that could also partially be due to the lack of live feeds. But there are some strong standouts and some decently likable people, and others that I just could not stand. I was somewhat entertained from the episodes, though there are periods of the season where I was just very bored and very annoyed. So in general, it's just very inconsistent. So I noticed throughout the season that because the first week was really extended to two weeks, which has never been done on BB Can before, but was done on BB US before All Stars, they kind of alternate as to whether week one is week two, week two is week three, week three is week four, so on and so forth. So you'll see me kind of figuring that out as this video takes place. So like all this other seasons, I'm going to do the cast intros. Koozie talks about being Big Daddy K. She's dynamic, bubbly, charismatic, smart, and is a queen, and talks about being a pageant girl where she won't leave without a crown. And I think how she described herself is very fitting as to how she's on the season. Zach mentions that he is the Kim Kardashian of Ottawa is a CEO boss and his experience in the corporate world will help him and this clearly sets up how he's going to be throughout the entire season. Santina talks about being a hippie and selling everything to live in a van. Ty talks about being in the army at 17 is a mama's boy and a result of a teen pregnancy. He also mentions that he wants to be in a showman's and will win the season and to bookmark it or whatever which good for him. They all make a final four once they enter the house, and it's interesting since they will play a factor in the first week, and we see how close Zach and Ty immediately get as they make a final two. Amal talks about being a strong, independent woman and wants to be entertaining on TV, as she is that entertaining in her everyday life. She talks about wanting to vote out the strong guys as well. Hope talks about being a big, ball of energy or big ball of energy and loves basketball and wants to be a comp beast. Jonathan talks about being a fisherman in Newfoundland, is a family man and how wonderful Newfoundland is. Renee talks about being a cocktail girl, loving makeup and is a chatty loudmouth and wants to manipulate people which is very interesting. We see Amal tell Zach and Ty about all the past winners and runner-ups who are on the portrait in the house. Daniel is very loud, fun, and talks about how he applied for 11 years, and there is actual footage of him applying for Big Brother Canada 1 that was aired like 10 years ago, but he's planning on keying with the girls and working out with the guys. Anika talks about how she has a resting bitch face and people think she is arrogant and can be blunt. Claudia talks about how she is very athletic and active, which she definitely lived up to. Roboro talks about being a meathead jock and claiming that he has layers, while talking about wanting to be in a showman's. Claudia talks about her ideal guy being tall, dark, handsome, and with tattoos, and it seems like production wanted Claudia and Roberto to get in a showman's, kind of like how it was very clear they wanted Kelsey and Jared, Zach and Ashley, and Sam and Adam to get in a showman's on their seasons. And I do think this is why Ty ended up being extremely jealous of Roberto, since he probably knew that production wanted them to be in a showman's initially. And we will talk more about this later. It becomes very apparent that Hope and Roberto are getting close once they enter the house. John Michael talks about wanting to make big moves, is a loudmouth, and how his parents are super fans. Dan claims that his charming social game will make him do well, 
which is very ironic looking back. He talks about being a DJ. Shania talks about wanting to be a party girl and is a bartender, but is a low-key anime nerd, but is too guy-obsessed and trusting. I'm glad she's aware of that, at least. It also seemed like production wanted Dan and Shania to get into his romance since she mentioned liking guys with tattoos and it panning to him, which I guess it somewhat worked. Vanessa talks about being a quote-unquote cool mom and talks about having alopecia as well as vitiligo. They are doing intros and Shania is gushing about Roboto. Hope starts dancing in the middle of introductions, which will be a thing for him the entire season. Arresta tells them that no one will be going home in week one. So, like I mentioned earlier, how Big Brother US did their first week or two in all their seasons pre Big Brother All Stars 2. But she also tells them about the dead last twist, where whomever is last in the HOH competition will be nominated for eviction. She tells them that they have to pick their partner for the HOH comp, and we see Roboto tell Hope to throw the HOH since they can't just get last, and it's clearly taking Hope a while to conceptualize everything. And it is clear that Roboto is picking up on certain things already. The pairs are Santina and John Michael, Shania and Renee, Hope and Roboto, Jonathan and Claudia, though we see them getting close a bit earlier, and Jonathan initially wanted to choose Roboto, Amal and Kuzi, Daniel and Anika, Vanessa and Dan, and Ty and Zach. It's interesting seeing who's partnered and how these dynamics really developed throughout the season. John Michael tells Santina that he doesn't want to win, but they end up winning anyways. Santina and John Michael end up beasting everyone in the first competition, whereas Shania and Renee end up being last. Ty mentions to a few people that John Michael and Santina are a powerhouse, and we see Santina and Roberto get close. Zach and Daniel start getting close, and he mentions in the diary room that he thinks John Michael knows the most about Big Brother. Once Santina tells Hope that she wants to work with him, it's clear that she's leading towards the boys. Zach mentions that he feels close to Ty, Rob, and Jonathan, so the four of them immediately start to align, and I believe Zach and Jonathan initiated this, if I remember correctly. Ty and Kuzi promise to take one another to the end, and Kuzi has a really good feeling about him, and she mentions that she is going to try and get close with Shania and Renee, which she clearly doesn't do that much in the season. We see the first moment of the awkward manse with Roberto and Shania. Ty tells Roberto that John Michael is going to be a problem and that they don't want him to win HOH since they fear that he will target a guy and they both want Santina to win, so they can obviously be safe. Renee and Claudia start getting close and notice how close the boys are getting, so they want to form something with the girls, which they did but only included one other person. Zach, Ty, and Jonathan talk about how they feel really good about one another and are trying to do the brigade strategy, where Ty uses Kuzi, Zach uses Shania and Renee, and Jonathan uses Claudia. Zach mentions that he sees Big Brother as a business corporate work atmosphere, which says so much about how he played the game. Zach and Claudia have an awkward conversation where she mentions that he has a bromance and he doesn't even deny it, but doesn't mention that it's an alliance, which she does not believe. The house guests are told that Amal had to leave the show for personal reasons, and they pretty much tell everyone not to speculate, and it's a private matter. As we will see in the future, they try to make some of the quits look like quits, but they were really pulled for health reasons. It's really a shame that we lost Amal here, as I think she would have been a very big character, and she was one of the biggest fans of the show, and she would have brought so much to the season. But I noticed that she left on day four, but they made it look like she left a lot earlier, and the HOH competition happened on day three, but they edited it to make it look like she left earlier. From what we know, she was close with the Kuzi and Daniel side of the house, so I definitely think she had potential. But I won't be putting her in any of the gameplay rankings, and it's just really a shame. Kuzi tries to speak game to Santina, and she gets increasingly cagey and doesn't give Kuzi anything, which is something Santina will do the entire season. Jonathan and Roboto bond about family, and Jonathan talks about being a young father at 20 or 21. Claudia tries talking game to Santina, and just like Kuzi, Santina gives Claudia absolutely nothing, and Santina does not care when Claudia mentions a potential guy's alliance, since she is working with them and is getting into a showman with one of them. 
John, Michael, Dan, and Zach are in the pantry room, and he outright tells them that he will go after the boys if he wins H O H and can't justify a nomination, since there's no such thing as a big move on week one. Of course, Zach does not like this, and it just confirms his mistrust for John Michael. Santina and John Michael promise to one another that no matter what, they will not nominate or target one another, no matter who wins HOH, and we see how well that aged. Santina ends up winning HOH, and Renee ends up being the third nominee. Renee feels like crap about being nominated, and Hope cheers her up, where we see them get close, and he tells her that he will work with her. Santina is thrilled with being in the HOH room and wants to nominate people in the Toucan room, which is Dan, Daniel, Anika, Claudia, John Michael, and Hope, since she isn't close with any of them. Kuzi and Vanessa talk about how the girls' alliances never goes far and they want to kick out all the boys. It is clear that Santina is more comfortable in her talks with Jonathan, and she mentions that she wants to work with the strong, physical guys who are tough and wants to compete. She specifically mentions being close to Zach, Ty, and Roberto. The guys talk, and Zach mentions that John Michael told him that he would target the guys, as he mentions John Michael being in love with him, which is ugh, and Zach is planning on influencing Santina. Rob and Ty want Dan on the block, but Zach doesn't want that, since Dan wants to go to the end with him. Roberto starts to see through Zach, which won't go well for him. Zack states that he wants to backdoor John Michael and kind of mansplains. Ty seems calm and rational at this point, which won't last long, and mentions that they should let Santina make her own nominations. Santina feels fine with nominating Anika and Dan since she has never talked game with either of them. She takes John Michael to Wendy's and she feels like she's getting close to John Michael, mentioning in the DR that she would want to bring him and the guys together, which is ideal for her. I will give her that. John Michael tells her that he would have put up the boys if he won HOH, and she's clearly not feeling that. Zack talks to her in the HOH room and makes his pitch about John Michael needing to go and is an ego test. He tells her to backdoor him, and Santina looks in the camera about Zack better not making her look like a fool or an idiot, which clearly has aged so well. John Michael talks to Hope about Santina being very elusive in her answers, and he doesn't feel safe after their Wendy's date, and he didn't make serious promises to anyone, including her. He mentions that putting him up will be good TV, but he's not sure on his read of the situation. We see the start of Claudia and Ty's showmance, and it's arguably the most uncomfortable showmance in BB Ken history. We were so unfortunate, based on what would happen throughout the season. And Vanessa mentions that she finds it hard to bond with people in the house. We also start to see the start of a flirt man's showmance between Santina and Roboto, which leads to him doing some yoga purses, and she's just watching him stretch his legs and buttocks. We would later come to know that Zack and Ty really did not like that they were getting close, though I really don't know why, but it's clear that those two were control freaks, and there's also some jealousy that we'll get into later. We see the start of Anika and Kuzi's bond, where they talk about Claudia and Ty's showmance and mentions that Claudia needs to go, as she would be proven to be correct on this, which Kuzi agrees with. I forgot that Anika wanted Claudia gone this early on. Anika mentions how she, Renee, Dan, and John Michael needs to go, but Kuzi reminds her that there's a potential guys alliance that needs to be handled. Santina tells Anika that she's going to use her as a pawn, though Anika throws John Michael under the bus, and she pretty much gives Dan a good idea that he's going to be nominated, and she mentions that it's because he was the last one to speak to her, and we would see his passivity throughout the entire season. Claudia is given immunity by Canada, and Daniel is salty that he wasn't given it, and we see him speak to Anika, which is another indication that those two are close. John Michael enters the room and asks if anyone knows anything since he was not told anything by anyone, which Daniel and Anika goes with. He speculates that there might be a room thing, which we've seen in other BB Can seasons, like BB Can 4 and BB Can 6 especially. Anika speaks to Santina again and mentions that Dan, John Michael, Renee, and Claudia are close, which I don't think was a reality, but it is revealed that Anika was one of the last people to speak to her as well. Santina tells Anika that she isn't going on the block as she's thinking about nominating John Michael. She tells Zack and Ty that she's going to put John Michael up, but of course Zack changes her mind and we would learn that he's obsessed with backdoors, which is also ironic seeing as what would happen to him. We learn that he is thinking about pulling Dan in and she would get rid of the most hated person in the house if she backdoors John Michael. 
Santina changes her mind again about wanting to put him up straight up since she believes in giving people a chance to stay and does not like back doors. But of course, Zack changes her mind again and mentions that he is mansplaining while doing it, but uses his real life success as the rationale. Santina nominates Anika and Dan for eviction. Santina told Anika before the nominations that she's going to be a pawn to backdoor John Michael, and we see Renee and Shania talk about how Santina is too close to the guys, which is why it's hard to talk to her. We see Zach and Ty talk, and they mention that their alliance of five consists of them, Santina, Roberto, and Jonathan. Because she knows how social Zach is, she campaigns to him, and correctly mentions that his alliance is Roberto, Ty, and Jonathan in the diary room. The conversation does not go very well, since she mentions the guy's alliance, and she's claiming that it could be paranoia due to past seasons, which puts Renee on Zach's radar. Zach tells Ty that Renee is an alternative target, and Ty does seem convinced. Roberto joins the conversation, and is clearly not fond of the idea, and makes that blatantly clear in the diary room, since he is close with Renee and feels like they all can use Renee, which seems rational. Zack relays this to Santina, and she mentions that Renee does want the girls thing. Zack tells her that he isn't worried about John Michael and that Renee needs to go. She mentions that while they don't talk much, it isn't the best idea, and she reiterates that her people are Zack, Roberto, and Ty. We then see Santina give Roberto a facial massage, and Shania overhears this by walking past the HOH room, and she doesn't even see anything, and this leads to her going into a huge cry fest because she apparently feels so dumb. While this is the end of this in the edit, the back and forth between Shanae and Roberto's flirtments continued well after this, and Shanae was more focused on getting a showman for a lot of the season. Rob joins the conversation, and he can tell that he isn't welcomed by the girly pops, so he leaves. We then pan to Ty and Claudia, whose showman heats up even more, but he lies about Renee being the target instead of just telling her the truth, though he knows Renee and Claudia are close. Ty ends up winning the veto, and we learn that Anika chose him for Huska's choice, so she is expecting for him to use the veto on her, since it would look shady if he didn't do so. Roberto and Zack end up having a conversation where Zack tells him that Renee is going home, and it's an easy week since John Michael still our target. Roberto does not get his logic and thinks it's a dumb move. Santina joins the conversation and mentions that she wouldn't care if Renee goes. Rob doesn't want his number to go, and they talk about next week, but Zack thinks it's absurd and rants about Rob to Ty since it's impossible to talk a game to him when the conversation seemed pretty rational. Claudia tries speaking to Ty and notices that he is off since their conversations are not the usual, and it's clear that he is agitated. Renee goes to Santina to have a chat since she has influence as the HOH, and it goes well since Santina now wants to keep Renee around. Claudia and Ty talk once again, and he is wondering what type of player she is. He's mad that Claudia is wearing Roberto's sweater, and she doesn't understand how it looks. By this point, and from what was shown on the digital dailies, it is clear that Ty is jealous of Roberto, and I think it's because they are very similar, as in they are both personal trainers, they are both clearly cast to be the good-looking tattooed showmancers. And it's easier for Ty to work with people who he isn't really threatened by, like Zack, Hope, and Jonathan. And Ty seems like the type who wants to be the only one, meaning like the only good-looking one, the only flirty one. And it was him who started to plant things to Zack about Roberta. We'll talk more about this later. I remember when I said earlier that it seemed like production wanted Roberto and Claudia to be in a showmance. I'm wondering if he sensed that, and that's why he got so paranoid and jealous. Anyways, John Michael and Santina have a conversation that he can't wait until the ceremony to happen, and he takes her for her word, but a lot of people are unsettled because no one has been told what is happening, and Santina gives him nothing, just like her conversations with most of the house guests. Ty takes Anika off the block, and John Michael is made the replacement nominee. John Michael is clearly upset that he is nominated, and the three of them, meaning Zack, Ty, and Santina, rationalize that it's because he is a super fan of the season. She has the awkward conversation with him, and he mentions that her word doesn't mean crap clearly, and he's wondering who got in her head. She claims that it was her own thoughts, though she hesitated a bit, and by the end of this week, she would learn that Zack did use her. The girly pops talk to John Michael, and they are generally shocked at this, where he does give them his campaign, where he mentions that he wants to target her. He ends up crying in their arms because he's generally shocked and knew he felt off all week. 
we get more gross Ty and Claudia content, where we have the misfortune of seeing them kiss in the snow. We see Santina find something in the library, which is very ironic since we know how it would eventually become her undoing. The Daniels end up speaking and then ends up giving Daniel his pitch, and Daniel is thrilled that people are finally starting to talk a game to him, but thinks Dan's pitch sucks, as Dan doesn't even make him any sort of promise and it annoys Daniel. John Michael talks to Vanessa, where she mentions that no one has talked game with her or made her feel comfortable, and of course he makes his pitch to her. Hope feels bad about what happened, and he does not want to vote out John Michael, since he likes him, and mentions that Dan is just chilling. Daniel doesn't see a logical path in keeping him, since who are the others that would vote to keep John Michael, since it isn't going to be Vanessa, and he doesn't want to go to war week one and be booted soon after. John Michael talks to Kuzi and mentions the house is split, and Kuzi mentions in the diary room that she doesn't want to see him go, and she tells him that the easiest person to campaign against is Dan. Santina attempts to build a good relationship with the girls, so she speaks to the girly pops about taking down the guys at some point, and John Michael could take the shots. And it's clear that Hope and Roberto can see the girls are talking game, as they can see them and are playing dumb, or they see the girls playing dumb about the conversation. Hope tells Daniel that there's a girls' alliance forming, and I'm assuming he told Ty this as well, and we don't see it, since the next season has Ty questioning Claudia about a girls' alliance, and they're both defensive about denying their gendered alliances. Ty tells Zach that they have a problem since there's a girls' alliance, and Claudia mentioned that Shanae and Renee are her people, and we know that he never lets up on this, and they try to make some false belief that they might vote to keep John Michael. John Michael continues his pitch, and the pretty boys end up being brought up as a vantage point. John Michael is evicted in a unanimous 11-0 vote, and it's sad watching him trying not to bawl his eyes out. While John Michael definitely was very loose-lipped in the house, it didn't seem like a lot of people wanted to target him, and it was very unfortunate how he was backdoored and how the entire situation was handled, especially seeing another Asian person going home very early in the season. At the same time, I don't really see much of a path for him in this season, as while people didn't want him to go, he didn't have close relationships with anyone, and I didn't have faith in him strategically. Overall, he is kind of just alright and kind of eh. After a relatively tame and borderline uncomfortable week one, or two weeks, this week's definitely a huge improvement and you start to see the puzzles put together as to what would cause the season to form regarding the main alliances and the main narratives that start to happen. We start to get some fights, some interesting strategy, and it's a turning point in many different ways and seeing the aftermath of this week and how it affects many people is definitely interesting to see now that the season is complete. Everyone is ridiculously sad about John Michael going, though most of the house knows who the culprits are. Kuzi rants to Rob and Renee about voting with the house and we learn that the girls did not want to split the power so early. Dan ends up winning HOH, though most of the house was targeting him at this point, and a few of the guys, mainly Hope and Roberta, are extremely sad because they were so close to winning the comp. Renee has to cheer Hope up, and Dan intended on taking out the floaters if he got an early age, but now he wants to take out the threats and use the floaters. Interesting idea in theory, but he never actually uses it and bonds with the so-called floaters throughout the season, which would be his undoing. Claudia, Kuzi, and Anika are annoyed since they know that Zach will win this HOH and it's why they wanted to keep John Michael. Ty and Zach make it clear that they want Roberto gone because he's a physical and social threat and Santina seemingly seems fine with it, though it doesn't last long and I don't even know if she was really fine with it because we don't have feeds. Jonathan and Roberto sense that there's a divide amongst the guys and hoping that things work out well for them. Hope is sad because he lost the comp, and he tells Kuzi that Dan only talks to Zach and no one else, while mentioning that they should have kept John Michael. They start to edit around Hope wanting to quit throughout the first several weeks of the season, and that's the real reason why he offered himself on the block to Dan. Daniel and Anika talk about how Jonathan, Roberto, Ty, and Zach are in an alliance, and Claudia, Shanae, yeah, and Renee are in another alliance, so he, her, and Kuzi are in the middle, and Dan thinks he will be able to get in with the guys. Zach, Ty, and Rob are talking about who is supposedly going up, and the two are clearly lying to him about Renee and Hope being the targets. 
Zack tells the diary room that he doesn't want Rob to linger in the house to make more strong relationships to undermine his relationships, and we see that all Zack cares about is control, since he mentioned this about John Michael as well, and he even mentioned John Michael's name in the statement. Dan invites Zack to Wendy's, and we learn that Dan trusts Vanessa and Shania, and Zack tells Dan to backdoor Roberto, and it's funny because how Zack is defining and is describing Roberto, it's really how Zack operates in the game. He mentions to Dan that people who are always in the game regret not taking their shots too early. Is this something that Emmett told him? Because Emmett didn't play like how Zack is playing. Dan's trust with Roberto is broken because Zack told him that Rob wanted to get rid of him, though Dan never fact checked and caused them to go back and forth, which is what he should have done. Roberto ends up in the HOH room with Dan, and they have a general conversation, but Dan says if he has an issue, he would bring it up, which he does not do. On the digital dailies, Dan actually promised Roberto that he was safe, and this was before Dan even talked to Zack. Roberto can tell that Dan isn't giving him any information, and that it is on yet another Zack HOH. Jonathan talks to Rob and knows that Zack and Ty is going to get people to take them out, eventually. Hope keeps on mentioning that he wants to prove himself to the guys with comp wins, but it's so clear that he's considering to leave the game, which is what everyone said on the digital dailies and what they have said in outside interviews. Claudia and Ty have a conversation, and Ty doesn't tell her what the plan is, and she mentions that he clearly wants to control everything. Renee talks to Dan, who mentions that she is on his radar due to Zack, and he mentions that Renee is a strong social player, which she really wasn't, like, the entire season. She tries to use them as being block buddies last week as a talking point to get herself not nominated, but it doesn't work. Dan nominates Hope and Renee for eviction. Dan would like Renee to go if the noms remain the same, but is planning on backdooring Roberto due to the latter wanting to talk at him as a comp threat. Dan tells Renee that she's his target. I don't know why he would tell her this, especially if she isn't his target. This conversation is so awkward because he mentions that a person he is working with led him to this decision while also mentioning that it is his own decision, which is very contradictory. Renee is shocked that Hope, someone she is working with, nominated himself. Daniel and Kuzi talk about how Dan could be lying and how Zack is playing too hard, too fast, and we learn that Daniel is working his social game to figure out who he wants to work with. Claudia asks Ty if he knows the plan, and he denies knowing it. She wonders if Hope is going to go home, and he mentions that neither one of them will go home. Claudia wonders if Rob is going to get backdoored, and Ty denies this, when that is the actual plan. Claudia tells him that they had a conversation about this beforehand, and it's just very awkward. Ty tells Santina and Zack that Roberto is telling the girls, Shanae and Claudia, that he could be backdoored, and Rob walks in on this awkward conversation, where Zack asks him if he spoke to Renee. Roberto asks them what's the plan to if the veto is used and they go silent. And it wouldn't even make sense for Roberto to tell Shania and Claudia this if he supposedly knew this information. Zack ends up winning the veto, and this is when Hope told him about the letter, which will be very important, so put a pin on it right now. And he wants to veto Hope to backdoor Roberto. Soon after the competition happens, Vanessa has an awkward conversation with Hope, where he thinks she told Zack how to beat him in the comp and she ends up crying. Zack wants to keep Dan around for a while, but Ty shuts it down and wants Dan to go very soon because he's good at comps and can flip the house. I also think Ty wanted to be the only pretty guy comp beast in the house, just based on how his vibe is here and throughout the entire season, and he likes to keep around on threats. I don't get this read about how Dan, the person who talks to no one, could flip the house. Anyways, Zack wants Ty to take more responsibility since everyone thinks that this will be his move when it's theirs and Ty tells Zack that he should have thrown the veto. Duh! Vanessa has a conversation with Hope and Christ because she would never throw the competition to him and to then to tell Zack how to beat him, especially when there's money on the line that she could use for her children's tuition. Vanessa has a conversation with Zack about why she's upset and she told him what she told Hope. Zack mentions that he made a rude comment about her being too emotional to be in the house, and Vanessa mentions that this is an emotional game. He apologizes for making her feel small and that it was not his intention. After they end this conversation, she ends up arguing with him in front of everyone, where she mentions that he is to try to be nice to people, and he told her in the past that he was a mean person, and he slandered John Michael's character. She reveals that he was trying to tell her what to do with the veto if she wanted, and he told her, Last week that he wanted Roberto out. 
Zack starts really yelling at this point and says that she needs to think about what she says. Roberto and Vanessa have a talk and apparently Zack wanted him up instead of John Michael and Zack is running to HOHs. He says that it doesn't make sense since Santina was HOH. I'm thinking Zack probably told Vanessa this as a screensaver or an insurance policy. He speaks to Zack about what she said and Zack and Ty get very defensive before stating that he will talk about this tomorrow since he, specifically Zack, isn't in the mood. Santina realizes that she has been used, though she realizes by the end of her HOH, and she speaks to Dan about how he should not let Ty and Zack steamroll his HOH like they did hers, since they like to get her to target John Michael. Santina and Zack have a conversation, mentions that they could have used Roberto to stay for their games, which is what they should do, and that Zack is good with his words. He does not see her point of view, she won't convince him otherwise, which is what he says to her, and she mentions that he needs to hear other people, which is true. He pretty much deflects and points it back onto her game, and she mentions that as a team, they need to hear one another. Zack leaves the room and Roberto enters, where she tells him that he's going on the block, and she mentions that Zack mentioned something about intimidation and her hanging out with Rob a lot, and as we would know later, Zack was very threatened by their relationship. He is trying to get more answers, and he's shocked that it's happening now, because it's really stupid, and also mentions that if Ty is fine with this, then he's been lying to him the entire game, which, duh! This somehow ends up with Jonathan and Zack arguing, as Zack ends up getting very defensive about this guy's alliance, and he mentions that Roberto is paranoid when Jonathan is just asking a simple question to him, and Zack mentions that Rob has different personalities that's causing people to go after him. Once again, another Zack deflection. Jonathan ends up crying to Santina about loyalty, his mother passing away, and other things. Jonathan mentions that he's thinking about asking Zack to use the veto so he, meaning Jonathan, can go up and go home, since he thinks Roberto would be the stronger player. I honestly forgot that Jonathan was doing stuff like this from this early on, and it's a foreshadowing event as to what would eventually be his demise. Dan is reassured by Zack and Ty that the plan is still going forward, and Zack tells Ty and Dan to tell Roberto that he's going up, but Zack can't be in the room, which they end up doing so. Roberto just mentions that there's narratives being spun by one person who has essentially won HOH. Zack takes Hope off the block, and Dan nominates Roberto, who uses the same speech that Zack literally crafted for him. Dan even admits that he doesn't feel the best about it, and that Zack might be playing Kim, which... Hmm, maybe you should have asked more questions? I don't know. Vanessa tells Rob that she's going to rally the vote for him, and he sulks with Santina. After the initial shock wore off, Renee, the girly pops are happy since the guys are turning on one another, and it benefits them. The guy's alive is done to Jonathan, and he tells Hope that he loves him and Roberto. Santina decides to play double agent since Ty and Zack still trust her, but she's going to campaign for Roberto to stay. Vanessa thinks that Ty and Claudia are going to vote with them for some reason. Roberto ends up campaigning to Hope, who is very saddened about the events. He ends up campaigning to Daniel, where the latter mentions that he's always told things last minute. After listening, Dan speaks to Kuzi about Roberto. Daniel, I mean, since it's them to keep a competitor, but his argument about Zack really brings some good points. Zack and Vanessa somewhat make amends and wants to move forward in the house. Renee also makes her campaign and mentions that the huge move will cause Ty and Zack to crumble if Roberto leaves, which she's kind of correct on, actually. They mention that they are tired of the men trying to bulldoze everyone and that the girls need to stick together, though we usually see how this usually works out. Jonathan ends up campaigning to Kuzi and Anika for Roberto, and he would be a good asset for them. Kuzi mentions that she's 50-50 as well as Anika, and Zack is annoyed that Jonathan is essentially campaigning for Rob to stay, because he may or may not have told Jonathan to distance himself from Rob. I don't remember the context of this or if it actually happened. Anika speaks to Ty about Zack's messy gameplay, and of course Ty does clean up for Zack, since he's shocked that Anika is considering to keep Roberto. Zack and Tatina have a conversation, and he's annoyed that she, in addition to Jonathan are campaigning for Roberto to stay, though it should be obvious since that's her showman and it's good for him to stay for her game, I don't know. The Shady Bunch mentioned the pros and cons of keeping Rob since they are the swing votes. He's a competitor who will be a good shield for them, but the guys crumbling will cause Daniel to work with the girls. Roberto is evicted in a 7-4 vote.
I definitely do think Roberto had a lot of potential in the game, and he really didn't do much wrong. I do think he shouldn't have aligned much with the guys, but he was clearly making connections with the girls as well, and he went home because two guys, especially Ty, were jealous of him. It's just really not fun seeing someone get taken out over such petty, jealous reasons. But as a character, he was okay, definitely more likable than some of the other guys, but I don't know if he would have been a very entertaining person had he stayed in the house. By the end of it, you do kind of just feel bad for him. And now that I'm thinking about it, what would become the crown probably should have kept him, based on what would happen to them for the rest of the season. Overall, Roberto was just likable. Week 3, or week 4 as others will call it, is easily the best week of the season and it was finally nice to see some people get their comeuppance and the major alliances of the season actually form here. Overall, it was a really great watch and it's such a unique week where there's two quits or pulls and no eviction and it was just all very exhilarating to watch. So everyone is trying to find out where the two rogue votes came from, since it was supposed to be a 92 vote to evict Roberto. Jonathan, who gave the vote, and Satina made it clear that they voted for him to stay, and mostly every person thinks it's Vanessa, since she hung out a lot with Roberto and campaigning for him. Vanessa claims that it was Daniel, and he has a temper tantrum over it. For some reason, Kuzi thinks that it was Zach who did the vote, which makes absolutely no sense, and Daniel asks Zach about it. Vanessa throws Zach under the bus for the vote and rants to Dan about letting Zach railroad his HOH. Hope was the other vote because Roberto was his friend and it's fun seeing Renee lash out about getting revenge on the person who did it right in front of Hope. Kuzi ends up winning HOH and Zach tells us that he threw the HOH since he has too much attention on him. Ty is publicly bragging about how he feels like he's the HOH which Claudia ends up hearing. Kuzi wants to make a big move and a move for the girls, telling Renee that she won't touch the block this week. Renee talks to Daniel about the vote, and Vanessa is stating that the four of them had some conversation, which causes Daniel to flip out again, and he threatens to cuss her out, since he never told Rob that he was voting to keep him, and Vanessa didn't have control to make that choice anyways. Claudia and Anika talk about how Ty made the comment about running Kuzi's HOH, and mentioning that she cannot work with Ty and his arrogance. Oh, if only this lasted. Anika feels like she and Claudia are bonding, and it's clear that she focused on the game now, since Anika feels good about Claudia wanting Ty to go soon. If only this camaraderie lasted long, or lasted much at all after this period. The house is letting go of the rogue vote thing, but Panini pressed Ty is still not over it, and I don't even know why. Ty and Santina ask Vanessa, since the latter spoke to Santina about it. Vanessa gets very defensive and lies her ass off, but she will hear someone else out if a pitch is given to her, since she has no team. The girly pops, Anika, and Kuzi are in the HH room, and they all agree that Vanessa is an easy numb, but Renee mentions that Santina is telling everyone about a girl's alliance. Kuzi takes Daniel to Wendy's and solidifies the alliance with the girls and him. Santina has a conversation with Kuzi, and despite Santina saying the right things, Kuzi does not trust her, and Santina will never choose to be on her side, which is a consistent thing for Kuzi this season. Jonathan receives immunity, and Kuzi tells Anika that she wants Santina to go, but Anika tells her that Zack or Ty needs to go, and she mentions that Ty said that her HOH is his. Kuzi talks to Ty about targeting Santina, and he's clearly annoyed, which she picks up on, and it's clear that he wanted Rob gone so he could have Santina to himself. He mentions that Santina is a number for them, and Jonathan will go with her. Remember the alliance that Santina, Ty, Zach, and Kuzi made when they were the first four people in the house? That's the additional context here. And he also mentions that Jonathan will go with her, but she tells him that Jonathan will never trust him or Zach again after what they did last week. Ty pushes for Vanessa to be targeted, and Kuzi is not feeling this at all, which she mentions in her monologue to herself. Kuzi nominates Vanessa and Santina for eviction. Santina is really pissed off about being nominated, since Kuzi is just making moves for the guys. Vanessa has left the game, and from what we have seen since, Vanessa was actually pulled from the game, and she apparently begged Big Brother to not make her leave. From the little we saw of Vanessa, I thought she was a fun presence, and she caused a lot of chaos in the house, though she is definitely a very terrible player.
She is someone who would have most definitely benefited from there being live feeds, since she's someone that usually wouldn't be on the show much, and people would see the live feed clips that she would have been on, and it would have caused more people to like her. So I feel really bad for Vanessa in this element. At the same time, she was never included in any solid game talks or alliances, and she would have just been coasting had she made it longer in the house. Unfortunate what happened to her, and I would be lying if I said I didn't miss her presence in the season, and I would have wished that she lasted a lot longer in the season. Kuzi has to nominate someone within an hour, and she asks Hope to be a nominee, since she wants to break up the trio of Zack, Santina, and Ty, and in the conversation, she mentions that Zack will go up if he takes himself off. Kuzi tells Daniel and Anika that either Santina or Zack are going up, and Daniel tells Zack that Hope is going home. Daniel reveals that Zack is working with him, and he's one of Daniel's closest allies. Zack wants Kuzi to nominate Renee and gives the same talking points he's done over the last three weeks, but it doesn't matter since Hope is nominated. Letter Gates comes up in the edit, though it has been two weeks in the running in real time. Hope tells Zack and Ty that he was the rogue vote to keep Roberto, and they apparently already knew this, which, duh, should have been obvious since they were very close the entire time. Hope wants them to quote-unquote line him up for eviction, and the edit really makes it look like it's a plan, but literally everyone on the Digital Dailies and even in the interviews mentioned that Hope really wanted to go home. Hope gives Ty a letter that was not supposed to be in the house, and Hope wants them to throw the veto come to him. Apparently, Hope has been doing this for at least a week, since he showed Roberto the same letter which the letter confirmed on Twitter. We also later learned that Hope showed Zach the letter of the day, Zach won the veto last week. Put a pin in all of this. Ty mansplains to Santina once again, and she's annoyed because she has no other choice but to work with them. Zach and Ty end up arguing about whether they should save Santina or not, since Ty wants to save her and Zach wants her to go. So it's fun seeing the two mansplainers mansplain and argue against one another, even if it's for a little bit. Kuzi tells Daniel that Santina is his target if they, meaning Zach and Ty, mess around with the veto, Zack will be on the block, since she doesn't like the game he is playing, and he's playing, playing very dirty, but Daniel does not want him to go. Hope ends up winning the veto, where Zack throws the competition. Ty also admits that he didn't throw the competition, but put a pin in all of this. Kuzi tells Renee in the middle of the comp that she's going to put up Zack, and Renee tells Hope to not let the guys bulldoze him, and that he needs to save himself. The girls are all told the plan within seconds, and and she speaks to the Shady Bunchers, where Anika tells her that Zack or Ty needs to go up, and Daniel mentions that Dan should be nominated, which is definitely the most optimal move for Kuzi. But he mentions that Zack is his only other ally, and all three of them, meaning Ty and Santina, are targets for everyone. Kuzi tells Ty that Zack is going up, and she's not going to make a weak move of nominating Renee, where Ty gets so defensive, where she mentions that he make big moves all season, but he's expecting her to make a weak move. Good point, Kuzi. Ty tells Zack that he or Dan is going up, and Ty asks Hope to stay on the block, which is just ridiculous. And it's clear that they saw him as the token clown that they wanted to use and dispose at their convenience. Ty and Zack have a conversation, and he mentions that he has something that can disqualify Hope from the competition. Keep in mind, Zack knew about this a week before Ty did, and production knows about this too, since everything is from 24-7, and the house guests can't speak without being Mike. Hope vetoes himself, and Kuzi nominates Zack, where she quotes Zack's own words about never missing shots and not having regrets in doing so. Ty and Zack handle the nomination as horribly as I have ever seen in Big Brother history. Hope mentions that he told Ty before the ceremony that he is taking himself off the block, and he felt that Ty was trying to intimidate him. Ty, Zack, and Dan are all in the storage room, and they mention that they have to make a move now, where Dan doesn't even know what the hell they're talking about. Ty and Zack mention that they're going to bring Hope's note from his girlfriend so he can get expelled. Zack knew about this before he won the veto last week, which he used to take Hope off the block so he could backdoor Roberto. But if he was so virtuous about cheating and stuff, he would have left Hope off the block and just sent him home last week. Production forces Zack to talk about it in the diary room, and when Hope is called to the diary room, the two act like the biggest asses ever, making chants about him getting expelled. That does not end up happening, duh, and after Ty, Zack, and Hope argue a few times about intimidation, strong arming, and aggression, and when that doesn't happen, the house is told about everything, so production stops the conversation, so 
How the hell did they not stop it when Hope told at least three people this over the last few weeks, but they stopped this conversation? Anyways, this leads to a house fight where Koozie and Ty end up arguing about how it is or is not cheating, and Ty doesn't explain it well, but Ty never explains anything well. And she mentions that they've been playing dirty for the entire season, which is definitely true. She yells that she'll call it out to the house, and Kuzi argues with Zack about the theater gate. Zack mentions that he's called intimidating, Kuzi gets in his face, and Daniel tries to shut it down, but he himself is shut down. Kuzi calls Zack the dirtiest rat in the game, and Anika yells at Zack as well. Kuzi asks Zack why he brought it up now, and he had no response, since it's very convenient. Zack threatens to walk, and Ty seemingly agrees, which shows how big babies they are. Since production knew that they essentially fucked up with their negligence, they decided to punish Hope with not being able to play in the HOH competition and cannot vote, where they gave everyone in the house the letters, since Hope's girlfriend snuck the sock in his luggage the day after the premiere aired, meaning it arrived about a week after they moved in in real time. Ty and Zack are mad that they cannot get him expelled, so they mention that they are going to leave. Zack decides to speak to Shanae and Claudia, since they are the only ones who will realistically keep him, and if they say no, he will just leave, hence why he stayed until Wednesday, though he threatened to quit on Monday. Zack tries to make some sort of alliance with Dan, Ty, Claudia, and Shanae, which never really goes anywhere. Renee tells Kuzi that Zack and Ty are campaigning, and they confront Daniel about him choosing Zack over Kuzi. I believe it's Kuzi and Anika who do this, since Daniel's vote could change the difference, though Daniel mentions that his vote does not matter, since he cannot vote for someone to stay he has no relationship with, though Daniel confirmed recently that he already told Zach he was voting him out. Kuzi mentions that Claudia and Shania can flip, and they were thinking about flipping, so Daniel's vote is important. Claudia tells Zach that he does not have the votes to stay, and she cannot keep three strong guys to leave. This is happening on Wednesday night, and he threatens that he and Ty will leave. Zack gets Ty so they can leave, and Zack ends up leaving, while Ty changes his mind at the last minute. I think Zack could have been an entertaining player and person if he had a semblance of self-awareness. And for some reason, he thought making shots and not missing means that he had to control everything from beginning to end. And people who are uber control freaks, who are so aggressive with their approach and have the subtlety and delicacy of a rhinoceros never makes it very far. He makes the wrong moves all the time and he underestimated the woman in the house. Though I will say that I really did enjoy his fall and his fall brought some of the best TV in the season. But overall I think Zack is a bad player and it sucks that he went out to be arguably the biggest sore loser in Big Brother history. Week 4, or week 5, as some would say, is the secret HOH, and I think in spite of the secret HOH just in general not being a very good twist, it worked out a lot better here than it did in BB Can 9. Everyone is still dealing with the aftermath of Zack's self-eviction, since Kuzi feels like voting Zack out would have given people closure, and there's still the doubt that he could have stayed, since the vote never officially happened. Ty decided to stay and feels like he put his trust in the wrong people, so he wants to right some wrongs. Of course, he's not going to take accountability as to his part in all of this. Dan mentions that he learned over the last two weeks that he was nowhere close to being Zack's number one and kind of feels gypped, while Daniel wants to keep his alliance together but is debating about winning the HOH. It is the secret HOH week which Santina ends up winning. Like in BB Can 9, we just see a bunch of people speculating and it causes for the episode to drag a lot since there isn't anything noteworthy going on. Santina wants to go after big targets and she pretty much tells Jonathan that she has the HOH. Ty and Kuzi end up making up from the backlash of the Zack week and we learn about the Crown Alliance when it was formed last week, though they don't show it until this week. Hope and Anika, as well as many people, think that Renee is the secret HOH, and Jonathan hints that it is Santina who is the HOH, who got a bad rap due to the beginning of the season. People like Dan and Ty think that it's either Jonathan or Renee who is HOH, and the almost self eviction made him closer to Claudia. Shania finally got her showmance after four weeks, as she and Dan have been getting closer over the last few weeks. I remember Ty and Zach wanted to like rub it in Rob's face though he clearly didn't care. But Shania finally got what she was casted for with her weak showmance, I guess. Santina makes it clear that she wants one of Dan and Ty out, 
since they are physical threats, and I also don't think she's over Dan's HOH, which booted her showmance. While Santina speaks to Dan, she gets annoyed that he does not make promises, which is a consistent thing with Dan as we've seen all season. Santina nominates Dan and Ty for eviction via the secret HOH. Dan suspects that Renee is the secret HOH because her expression was too shocked and Renee's paranoia just spirals more and more. And it was great TV, to be honest. A bunch of people give Ty encouragement and tells him to calm down, which to me showed that he was not the target. Santina mentions to Dan that she would never put Ty up, which makes him feel a way, since it means that she would feel comfortable putting him up. Ty makes it clear to Renee that it was her who was the HOH, which causes Renee to spiral even more, and she ends up questioning Hope on him supposedly knowing who it is. Renee is annoyed that she is being framed, and Dan outright tells Renee that it is her, and Renee thinks it is Santina. He doesn't believe her, since Claudia and Shanae are close to Ty and Dan, and Renee would want them to go to help her out. Renee isn't an uber control freak like Zack, who sees allies of allies as a bad thing. Renee rants to her allies, and even they start to distrust her, especially Claudia, and Shanae has to tell Renee to calm down. Hope and Ty make up before the veto competition, though Hope mentions that he will never trust Ty again after Ty leaves the room. Which is another reason why Zack and Ty doing what they did earlier in the season was so stupid, not only with Lettergate, but also with booting one of their own allies. Daniel mentions that he knows he's going to look stupid for last week in the edit, which is great self-awareness on his part, and he also needs to win a comp, and he mentions that he would save Ty if he won the veto. Claudia throws Renee under the bus to Ty, and he mentions that he told Claudia that Renee ain't crap from the very beginning. Hope seemingly forms the crown now, though there are a lot of hints that it was a thing from the past episodes, just based on certain conversations, and I believe the other house guests have since confirmed that it was formed on Kuzi's HOH. Daniel ends up winning the veto and wants to take Ty off the block, because they think he will vote with them always, which is so hilarious because that was never going to happen. They feel more comfortable with this when Jonathan tells them that Santina is the HOH, where her plan is if Ty comes off, Claudia goes up, and if Dan comes off, Shania goes up. Daniel tells Jonathan and Hope that he won the veto and is planning on using it on Ty to make sure that Dan goes home, but Hope does not like this plan. Daniel talks to Ty about how he will look out for him and Claudia if Ty looks out for him and Anika, only to tell him that he has the veto. Daniel, via the invisible veto holder, takes Tay off the block, and Santina, via the invisible HOH, nominates Claudia. Dan makes it clear to Santina that she is the secret HOH, and Claudia is thinking that it's Renee or Santina. Claudia, Shanae, and Ty are complaining, and Renee is still trying to defend herself, mentioning that it's either Anika or Santina. Ty thinks that Santina is the HOH, and he's mentioning that two of his allies being nominated is a personal attack, which is so ironic coming from him. Ty and Santina end up arguing about her being the secret HOH and she is not lying well, where he tells her that he's going to target her. Ty tells Renee that Santina thinks that she's the HOH and Renee decides to confront Santina. They start arguing and then Ty enters the argument with Santina where she mentions that he's trying to create dissension, then Dan gets involved yelling at Santina, and Santina thinks that Anika could be the HOH, which causes Anika to yell at her as well. Kuzi is dancing in the storage room about this chaos is going to cause her to be safe for the next two weeks. Dan starts campaigning, and Shania mentions that Daniel, Kuzi, and Anika have power, with Jonathan and Hope being powers as well in that alliance, and she starts crying about who to send home. And we know that her emotions about guys seem to be a central thing for her so far in the season. Claudia mentions to Anika and Kuzi that she wants to go to the end with the girls and to keep the girls alliance, but she still wants to target Santina and Rennie, which is stupid on Claudia's part. They talk about how they want to be the final three, and that Claudia has no problem cutting Ty later on, and we all know how well that ages. We see Claudia campaign to many more people, and Dan mentions to Hope that he will be a shield for the guys, and Hope tells Dan that he would have went home if he didn't win HOH, and it was Zack and Ty pushing it. Dan thinks that his only chance of staying is to throw Ty under the bus, and to target him. Dan is evicted in a unanimous 8-0 vote. Dan was essentially a mute for most of the season. He was barely on the digital dailies, and he was a mute with most of the house guests. He just really didn't have much of a social game and kind of just latched on to Zach. He was close with Vanessa, but she was a sinking ship, and 
The Shania thing didn't really benefit him in any sort of way. He was just way too passive, way too easily influenced, and he never really questioned anything or went to find answers for himself. In general, he's debatably one of the biggest duds of the season, though I don't get why he is so hated compared to Ty and Zack, where he seems like a nice guy. Just his head wasn't in the game much, and he was really a deer in the headlights. Week 5, or week 6, is the start of the end of the crown, and it really shows that they're only in power for like 1 to 2 weeks at most. And this was where things flipped on its head, and most of the house ended up being really pissed off, since the most unexpected result kind of ended up happening, and who ended up leaving this week was something that no one predicted. And the meltdowns this week were on board with the friendship nerd heard in BB6, which I just really loved. At the same time, it would start the trend that would make the season predictable from here on out with the comp results. So Ty ends up winning the HOH and wants to get revenge on whoever put him up. We learn that Koozie threw the HOH and Renee made a promise for Ty to not put him up and we know how good Ty is with his word, though Ty blatantly rejects Hope's deal. He is planning on nominating Santina and Renee on the blog together so he can send Santina home. Santina complains about the toast that Anika made and how all of it is soft, which others mention that it's a bad social move. Claudia pitches for Kuzi to go on the blog and how she dropped from the comp so quickly shows that she's very confident in her position, but he rejects it since he overlooked Renee for other people since the beginning and isn't doing it again. Santina complains about the uncooked waffles and it causes for her and Anika to argue once again. Since Santina was being rude and Santina calls Anika a rude ass, it's just very hilarious to me. Ty mentions that he would nominate Shania if he needs to replace someone as a nominee and he tells the diary room that he does not like how Shania has any sway on her and he admits that he wants to isolate her from her friends. Put a pin on this for the future. It is clear that Ty is the I'm the only one type of person where he doesn't like it when anyone else has other supporters or other allies and it's just very uncomfortable to watch. Ty asks Hope to go on the blog since he would prefer for Renee to be the replacement nominee and Hope offers to be on the blog since he wants Ty to trust him though he will take Ty out as soon as he can. Ty and Santina have an awkward and awful conversation where he mentions that he's putting her on the blog and how they haven't been working together since week one due to her falling out with everyone and fleeing at her crying. Santina is given safety by Canada and we see Anika and Claudia ranting about it. Ty mentions that he is trying to play the game honestly so he has to send his plan B Renee that he has to put her up with hope since he would be pissing people off with anyone else being nominated. Which she is pissed off about. Renee tells her allies that she's going up with Hope since she has the least connections where the girly pops complain about since they outlasted the crown and Koozie through the H2H comp because she is safe. Claudia tries pitching to Ty to target Koozie but he doesn't care to hear her out and he brings up the girly pops where they mention that the crown is coming for him. He tells Renee that he has tried to work with her several times but she shot him down and supported the Zack move, though he mentions in the diary room that she has been on his radar since week one, so very contradictory. Ty nominates Renee and Hope for eviction. Kuzi is annoyed that Hope offered himself up again and he tells her that he won't do it anymore. Renee and Claudia complain about Kuzi's social game and how he can forgive her after screaming that he's out next, especially since she sent Zack home. It just shows that she has a social game and they don't, clearly. Kuzi always unintentionally walks in these conversations where she walks into the girly pops talking about her and Ty talking to Claudia about Kuzi having a crush on him, which ugh. Ty sells Renee out to Kuzi since he knows that Kuzi is a power player, but acts like Claudia also wasn't trashing her. Ty decides to choose Shania to play for the veto, despite her being the only one who would save Renee from the block. Kuzi tells Ty that he made a dumb move for choosing Shania, though he mentioned that he wanted to hide his alliance, and he can convince Shania to keep the noms the same if she wins it, which they don't think she will. Unfortunately for them, Shania wins the veto, and even Claudia mentions that she would have kept the nominations the same if she won the veto, which just shows that she lacks a backbone and is relatively wishy-washy when the times get tough. Shania knows that many people are going to pressure her into keeping the nominations the same, but she has no intentions of doing such. 
Time knows that there's a chance that Shania uses the veto, which Claudia tells him that, but he tells Claudia that he will tell Shania that she will go on the block. They end up arguing over this, and she mentions that he can't control everyone's moves, which is true, but of course he doesn't listen to anyone, so it went in one ear and out to the other. Rene sees through Ty's bullcrap, and he tells Shania to not use the veto, though Shania explains her rationale as to why she's going to use the veto, and he mentions that she will be public enemy number one. The Crown comes up with a plan to get Shania to not use the veto, where the Shady Bunch will speak to Shania, while Hope distracts Renee to not intervene in the conversation. More gaslighting happens, but Shania doesn't buy it, as she vetoes Renee and Ty nominates Jonathan. Shania mentioned throughout the episode that people saw her as a flutter and believes that this move will disprove that. There is a whole crying fit that happens after this veto ceremony, and all of them from the Crown are very sad and end up crying about it. Even Santina is crying about it. Ty apologizes to Jonathan for nominating him, since he never intended on having to make that move. Claudia is annoyed that people are mad that things did not go their way, and no one reacted like this when she was nominated last week. That was because they have social games and the girly pops relatively dumped. She and Ty argue about this, and Claudia mentions that this was a good move, and it leads to Claudia to break up with him which we unfortunately know does not last long, and I think they make up a lot sooner than they showed in the episode. Hope feels regretful since he put himself on the block, and Nika wants Shania out now, and Ty apologizes to the crown yet again. Neither Hope or Jonathan wants to campaign against the other, and the girly pop starts trashing Santina's reaction, when Santina sarcastic says congratulations, and Renee calls her out on it. Renee mentions that you know when a good move is made because of a reaction like that, meaning that you are not a part of something and whatever you weren't a part of is disrupted. Good read on Renee's part. Johnny is the shield of the alliance, but Hope is the knight, and Koozie wants to keep Hope since he is more competitive in that comparison. Koozie ends up coaching Hope on what to say in his campaign, and they end up joking about the commando meaning. Jonathan mentions that Ty wants him gone, since he has a better relationship with Hope, and Jonathan believes that he has the girly pop's votes. Hope asks if Jonathan would expose the big alliance, and Anika thinks it is a dumb question. Hope can sense that the alliance is vibing with him, and Kuzi lectures Hope for getting himself into this mess, and Kuzi talks about Hope to Daniel, as he is annoying her. The girly pops talk about how there's only going to be three guys left, and Anika, Kuzi, and Santina enter the room where the girls talk about getting back together after the last attempt of a girls' alliance. They don't like that Ty is telling them to keep hope, and they know that he changes his mind on the dime. It's interesting, since from the digital dailies and from what the other Huskies have mentioned, Jonathan asked to be voted out. We saw him throw himself on the knife for Roboto on the episode a few weeks back, where he wanted to be sent home instead, but they decide not to show it in the week that Jonathan actually goes home due to it. Jonathan is evicted by a 4-3 vote. I had a much higher opinion on Jonathan as a player before I rewatched the season, and with this rewatch, it just reminds me of how not strong of a player he was, and I forgot how under-edited he was in general. He was a nice dude, I like that he was very loyal, though he was loyal to a fault, and I like that he was in touch with his emotions. But in general, I don't really remember him doing much else, and it's weird that he was the overwhelming favorite of the sea season, but Canada is very territorial with their provinces, especially the East Coast. Overall, Jonathan's a cool guy, but he wasn't cut out enough to handle the game, and I don't see that improving if he were on other seasons. The season definitely starts to wane around the point of week 6, or as some people would call week 7, as the predictability based on the competitions, the floppage of certain alliances, and all that starts to really take place, and there's really no changing it, but there are a few entertaining moments in this week that doesn't make it a bad week. Koozie ends up winning HOH, or what they think is HOH, because it is the chain of safety, but we see Kuzi tell Anika that she's going to nominate Ty and Santina, since there's three weeks left after this week. Anika also tells Hope that she's annoyed with Ty, since she, he could have nominated Claudia, but he wants them to do his dirty work. Daniel, Hope, and Anika 
sees that the room is going crazy and leads to a long chain of events that causes all the girly pops to be blocked out of the room while the house tries to figure out what is happening. They look through the books to see the code and when the girly pops are eventually let in, they of course let the entire house know how crappy they are and it causes a huge argument. Shanae is the most vocal out of everyone and they really don't have a good defense for this. They don't see the nomination sign put up yet, which always happens on nomination day, so Anika and Daniel realize that it might be the chain of safety, and they plan the order, which means they don't pick Hope last, since he will save Santina, and they don't want her being saved. Hope joins the conversation and mentions that the girly pops need to be targeted, and he has the correct read on this, but Anika tells him that he's playing emotionally, since the girly pops are rightfully mad, and we learn from Daniel in interviews that Kuzi and Anika changed their targets to Tai and Santina after it being the girly pops at the end of last week. And we also learn that Kuzi and Anika had the tendency of not listening to their own allies, and it ends up biting them in the butt. Kuzi chooses Hope, who chooses Anika, who chooses Daniel, who chooses Shania, and who chooses Claudia. This means that Ty, Renee, and Santina are nominated for eviction. Ty wins the safety competition, which essentially functions like a veto, leaving Renee and Santina on the block. Santina cries her eyes out as she campaigns to the house, and Ty pretty much tells her that she will never have his vote. She pleads to the crown about how she has no one, and Renee tells them that they have to play nice. Santina doesn't want to bother campaigning to people, if they aren't going to give her a chance, and Renee mentions to Daniel that her back has been against the wall since day one, and she still deserves to be here. Santina is evicted in a unanimous 6-0 vote. Santina is most definitely a unique house guest, and I don't really think there's anyone that is like her. She definitely did have her frustrating moments, like how she played the first week, and she was very rude a lot of the times, but there are many moments where she was very entertaining and she was aware of her screw-ups. As a player, she's outright awful, there's really no way around it. There was no social game there, she was all over the place strategically, and while she realized that she was played on her H or H, she didn't come to terms with her other faults in the game. Essentially, she never really recovered after the first week, and it's crazy that she ended up being the first woman voted out, as the other two were essentially pulled from the game, so they weren't voted out where Santina was, and she's the fifth person to be evicted, despite being the third juror. The crown feels like they're exposed, and the girly pops realize that they're at the bottom, and Ty realizes that he has no allies. Claudia ends up winning HOH, and of course the girly pops celebrate. Claudia is sure about targeting Ty but does not know who to nominate beside him, and people don't know how close Hope and Ty are, and Hope could beat Ty in a physical veto. At least that's what Renee and Claudia are hoping. Ty uses gummy bears as a part of his campaigning pitch to Claudia, and seemingly knows that he is the target. Apparently he did this with a lot of people with using the gummy bears as talking points. Claudia tells him that he's closer to her side, which he denies, and by her side, she's referring to Kuzi. Daniel and Kuzi seemingly regret their choice in not sending home Renee, and now they need to win out to get to the end. Claudia and Shania talk about how she's tried to work with him, but it never works. Shania mentions that Kuzi is pitching Hope says a lot, and suggests to maybe nominate Hope and Anika. Claudia nominates Hope and Ty for eviction. Hope mentions that he wants to keep the nominations the same so they can send Ty home. And I don't know why Hope is thinking this, since Ty will just go home if Hope vetoes himself off the block. Anika and Kuzi also mentioned keeping the nominations the same, and I think I get it somewhat now, since the other three crown members will control the vote, but it's just a stupid risk for Hope to want to stay on the block, and none of this ends up mattering since Ty ends up winning the veto. Kuzi is shocked that Claudia picked Renee over herself for the veto, and I don't see why she thinks this is such a big deal, since none of the women were winning that specific comp. Let's be real. Hope is sad because it means another member of the crown will be going home, and Claudia is clearly leading towards Kuzi as the nomination. Anika and Daniel throw Kuzi under the bus towards Claudia, and mentions that Kuzi chose Hope chain of safety, where Daniel chose Shania. 
Kuzi is told that she's going up because Daniel chose the girly pops in the chain of safety and Anika has been on the block before, which Kuzi doesn't handle well at all. Tai vetoes herself off the block and Kuzi is named the replacement nominee. Hulk feels like crap since he was supposed to be the one who wins the competitions for the group, but he has not been able to do that. Hope gives a passionate speech to the group and Kuzi is ready to campaign and target Claudia when the time comes. Claudia mentions that they are going to keep their word and sending Hope home. Kuzi tells Claudia that the reason for her nomination seems really dumb and she mentions that Daniel chose Shania because of Kuzi's instructions and she comes off as very arrogant in this conversation as she knows that if things flip, Claudia is ready to sacrifice Kuzi over Hope and Anika and Daniel. Hope gives a passionate speech in Ghanaian, I think that's the language, to the crown and Daniel as well as Anika talk about Kuzi taking credit for Daniel saving the girly pops during the safety chain and Daniel mentions that her moves never would have went down without his help. Kuzi campaigns to Tai about how she wants to take out the girly pops in succession and Tai tries to make a final two with Kuzi. Hope campaigns to Tai about the competitors needing to stick together, too late for that, and campaigns to Daniel and Anika. Hope is evicted in a 4-1 to one vote and he has the entire house do a dance before he leaves and I've never seen anything like this in BB history. Hope is just a really fun and excitable presence throughout the season and brought some much needed comic relief in this more tense and dire cast. Strategically, he was all over the place, though I do think he was learning as the game went on, but his first three to four weeks were very sloppy where he wanted to go home and he didn't really know what he got himself into. In general, he was definitely one of the more interesting guys of the season and arguably the biggest standout outside of Dan and Ty. He just has a magnetism and a dynamic system that a lot of the guys just didn't have this season, and even a decent amount of girls didn't have either. Week 7, or week 8 as it's sometimes called, definitely had some interesting moments that kept it relatively entertaining, but the predictability at this point was starting to really grind my gears, and I was starting to really get over the season sooner rather than later. So, Renee wins the next H or H, and of course the girly pops are thrilled. Daniel feels like he is going to be nominated since he has little relationship with Renee and that Ty will be nominated against him. Ty knows that he has been by himself since Dan was evicted and is just going to rely on competitions. Anika mentions that she's going to throw Ty and Kuzi under the bus, and we learn that things got tense with Kuzi because Anika was told that Kuzi was taking credit for the chain of safety, and they argued about it a bit before Hope's eviction. Kuzi speaks to Daniel about it, and Anika is also worried about her relationship with Ty. Kuzi goes to speak to Renee, who mentions that she is going to nominate her, since Kuzi did not nominate her during her first HOH. We learn that Daniel and Anika made an alliance with Shanae and Claudia, where they all hope that if Ty ends up being safe, Kuzi goes home. Daniel asks Kuzi about her conversation with Renee, and he knows that she is holding back information from him, which is causing trust to be lost. The girly pops mention that people underestimated them and should have taken them out earlier, which is what I've been saying all season, and Shanae tells Renee that Daniel and Anika are worried about how close Kuzi is to Ty. Renee mentions that she would rather keep Anika and Kuzi for next week over Anika and Dan, since the latter two are closer. Kuzi ends up making her pitch to Shania and Claudia in front of Daniel, which is definitely a poor move. Anika throws Kuzi under the bus in her date to Wendy's with Renee, and Anika ends up crying because she feels like Kuzi threw her under the bus. Renee also tells Daniel that because Kuzi was just on the block, the girly pops don't want to put her up initially, and this is what has Anika mad. Claudia speaks to Ty and he tells her that he isn't going to bother talking to Renee about the game. Daniel and Anika complain about Kuzi more to Shania and it's just tiring at this point. Shania and Claudia throw Renee under the bus, mentioning that she was dead last the first week to winning HOH and is potentially taking out a huge threat. According to Daniel, this final four was a false security blanket, but they really push it as a real thing in the edit. Shania and Claudia talk about cutting Renee, and they both are very conflicted on it. Shania and Claudia are more than fine with pushing for Kuzi to go, especially since they know it is not the best move for Renee. They mention that if Ty stays, it would be someone for Daniel and Anika to go after. 
Kuzi notices that Anika and Daniel stop speaking when she enters the room and calls them out about it, but of course they deny it. After she leaves, Anika rambles on and on about trust, never forgetting people who crossed her, yada, yada, yada. Renee nominates Tai and Anika for eviction. Everyone is hoping that they can finally send Tai home this week, and Tai likes the pressure since he knows that he will win the veto. Anika is told that she is the pawn, but she is really frustrated that Kuzi is not on the block instead, and I'm really over her complaining. Kuzi speaks to Daniel and mentions that they might be a stronger threesome with Tai than with Anika. Hope told Kuzi before he left that Anika told him that Daniel is her number one and her plan is to let the big targets take one another out, so he told her to watch out for Anika. Kuzi goes on a monologue to the cameras about how she wants to veto Tai if she ends up winning the veto and how he can be her soldier. Kuzi tells Tai that she will win veto for him if she wins the veto and how he she is fine with going to war with him than with Anika. None of this matters since Tai ends up winning the veto again. Kuzi was close to doing so but wasted valuable time in grabbing the money in the veto comp and Daniel also lost the comp by 4 seconds. Kuzi is happy that Tai won but is worried since she's one of the two options to be the replacement nominee and she makes her plea to Renee to not be nominated. Shania and Claudia complain about Kuzi going for the money though Kuzi wanted to send the money to her family in Zimbabwe, and Shania is pushing hard to get Kuzi out since she is the biggest threat. Daniel mentions his pitch to Renee about how he would not put her up if he won, and Daniel is somewhat telling the truth about this and mentions that Kuzi has more jury votes than him. Tai helps Kuzi with her pitch on how to stay, and Kuzi tells us that she wants to go to the final too with Tai since he deserves it and she wants to beat the best. Kuzi tells Renee that she is alone and everyone else in the house has duos, so it makes sense for Renee to keep her. Tai reads himself and Renee nominates Kuzi, who tells Renee to shut up and to sit down, and tells us that she will make sure that Renee never wins, meaning that she will taint the jury, and it's just not a good look for Kuzi. The girly pops complain about Kuzi's actions at the veto ceremony, and Kuzi wants to set it up where everyone is against Renee, since it's a stupid move to put her up. Kuzi knows that she has Tai's vote and has to campaign to the girly pops in order to stay, so tells Claudia, Shania, and Renee that Anika is closer to Daniel and Anika is a sneak. She tells them that she will go after Anika and Dan, and while it seems that Claudia might consider it, Shania is not buying it, since Kuzi told her that she is going after Renee. Claudia mentions that Shania feels fine with Anika because Daniel and Anika has a better relationship with them. Before the eviction, we see Daniel and Kuzi going at it, where Kuzi tells Daniel that he failed her as a friend and he has no backbone, where he mentions that he has a backbone and that she has a spineless character, since she acts like a brat when things don't go her way. Apparently, they meet up seconds after this, but I get why they didn't show it, since it kills the suspense. Kuzi is evicted in a 3 to 1 vote. Kuzi is very entertaining this season and is arguably going to be the most iconic and remembered person in the season once time has finally settled in on the season. I liked how she didn't fear anyone, she fought for what she believed in, and how she was ready to make big moves. Strategically, I definitely don't think she's the best, but she was really great socially and she had a lot of influence over the house. She definitely made the season a lot more interesting than I think it would have otherwise been, so for that I definitely give her a lot of credit for, though she got very arrogant as her last few weeks in the house took place and it wasn't the best look. It is the double eviction and Claudia wins HOH where she nominates Anika and Daniel for eviction because she would rather join Ty than beat him and fail. It seems like the girly pups want to vote Anika out at this point and Daniel warns that if Ty wins the veto he is going to do something funky. Claudia tells Ty that Shania will be the replacement nominee and he needs to save her, which he has no intentions of doing. Ty ends up winning the veto again, and Claudia is expecting him to not use the veto, but Ty is going to use it, and wants Shania up, because she has been a thorn in their relationship and is working with Daniel. After this, there's a lot of crying from the girly pops, and this is before the veto is used, where Shania thinks Renee deserves to be in the house more than her. Ty vetoes Anika, and Claudia nominates Shania, 
Though I think she could have just nominated Renee, and she should have just nominated Renee. And Shanae is evicted in a 2-1 to -one vote, where damn near everyone is crying their eyes out. Shanae really didn't get a lot of focus on the season, and I do think she hurts from not having live feeds, since I think we would have had a lot more context of her game with them. For the first five weeks, we just saw her obsess over getting a guy, whether it was with Roberto or Dan, but after they both left, it seems like she focused and got a lot better at the game, where she won the veto and started the disintegration of the Crown Alliance. She really pushed for Kuzi to go, and she had the best relationships with the Crown members out of the girly pops. In general, as a personality, she's not very memorable, and she's not going to step out, but she was cool enough and didn't annoy me at any point throughout the season, outside of the very beginning with the whole Rob situation, but in general, she's relatively harmless. By the time of week 8, or week 9 as some would call it, the season officially falls off the cliff and never recovers, and I barely even want to waste much time talking about it. Ty speaks to Renee and Claudia about how Kuzi told him about the crown before she left. Claudia mentions the final four with Daniel, Anika, herself, and Shania, but the latter got too close to Daniel and Anika. She and Renee are also confused as to why Daniel and Anika, or Anika actually, weren't evicted if they're in the big alliance. The shortest HH competition ever takes place, as it was only 17 seconds, and Anika ends up winning. Who wants to target Claudia, calling her a dummy for her HRH, and that she's good at endurance and mental pumps? Ty ends up arguing with Claudia and Renee, where they put him through hell over the last four weeks, or that's his words. Renee mentions that it's because his moves were trash, which they were, where Ty says that it makes no sense for him to keep all three together, and he mentions that she ruined his age or age. Though it was because, as Renee said earlier, he made a bad move in choosing her for the veto, but of course that accountability just isn't going to be there for him. Daniel mentions that he could go home this week, since Ty is shifty and he's going to protect Claudia. Ty laughs at Anika, telling him that she does not fully trust him, though he would eventually prove her right, because of his relationship with Claudia, and she asks him how he knew about the crown, and he tells her that Kuzi told him, and Anika tells Renee this. Anika nominates Claudia and Renee for eviction. Renee mentions the final three with Ty and Claudia, which was formed very late into the game, as they're expecting Ty to win the veto and use it on one of them to send Daniel home. Claudia is annoyed at Anika's speech and knows she wanted to target her for weeks now and to make Ty feel more comfortable and secure. Daniel and Anika named their alliance with him so he could feel more secure in hopes that he does not use the veto. Renee tries to get more information out of Anika, which tells her that there's no other plan to send her. Renee home, or that's what Anika told her, and Anika feels like she owes Ty, essentially. Anika tells Ty this information, and it pisses him off, since it causes for him to doubt Renee. Unshockingly to everyone, Ty ends up winning the veto again, and it's clear that he's going to do what Ty Ty does. I don't even care to discuss this, as it's clear that Ty is going to Claudia, which Daniel, who is tired of being second in a comp, is aware of that fact. But Anika just does not see it. Daniel tells her that they should tell Ty that Renee is the target, so he won't veto Renee. Ty and Claudia talk about how they are fine with cutting Renee, and neither of them want Anika in the final three. Anika and Ty end up arguing once he told her that he is going to use the veto, and admits that he did lie to her. Duh! Ty gaslights Renee even more for trying to fight for herself, and mentioning that she was trying to see if Anika was targeting her as a backup. He gathers Renee and Anika in the same room, and the two fight about the semantics, where it's clear that Anika misused some words, causing him to realize that Anika is willing to play dirty, and they fight about representation and stuff, which was on the digital dailies, but that didn't really make it on the episode version. Ty vetoes Claudia, and Anika is forced to nominate Daniel. Daniel knows that there's a chance that he is going, and is trying to remain calm, but is freaking out. He tells Anika that she needs to pretend that she still trusts him, and that she needs to have a better happy face, or a fake happy face. Renee tells Ty that she wants to take him to the final two, in order to beat the best, and mentions that the best social player in Daniel will win if he makes it to the end. We get to see the auction, which is what the Wendy's points have been leading up to. Long story short, Ty ends up getting the chance to record a video to the jury, where he pleads his case and has a strategy session with Tishan. 
Rene has to plead to Claudia so the latter can plead to Ty about how she has had to fight the entire season, and while she and Claudia aren't the best social players, it would be cool to have two women at the end. Daniel mentions that he saved Ty with the veto, proving his loyalty, and is fine with Annika going to jury to plead for him, since Kuzi is in the jury house slandering him. Rene is evicted in a 2 to 1 vote, with Anika breaking the tie. Rene is definitely not a good player, and it's interesting that she wanted to be the social master manipulator, but she couldn't manipulate anyone to do a damn thing, and her social game was very bad throughout the entire season. At the same time, I like how she always fought, she never gave up, and she was definitely entertaining at many moments, though there are also moments where she grinded my gears, especially as she tried to make the catchphrase Boute happen. She was definitely at the bottom of her alliance for the entire season, and it was clear that the Huskers just didn't respect her as a player, despite her being a smart woman and being one of the bigger fans of the season. In general, I enjoyed her presence, though I don't know how memorable she's going to be in the grand scheme of things. So we made it to week 9, or week 10, and it was just as boring and mundane as the prior week, and I was glad that the season was ending. Ty ended up winning the Final Four HOH, and apparently the house helped him study for this, which just shows the low caliber of this cast gameplay-wise. Everyone knows that it comes down to the power of Vito, and there's so much filler in the episode where there isn't much happening or much to discuss. Ty and Claudia end up fighting about what happened in the past, and I don't even give a F at this point. Ty nominates Daniel and Claudia for eviction. Daniel is stressing about the Vito and knowing that it is impossible, since he's gotten second in many competitions and is generally discouraged. Claudia ends up winning the final veto of the season, and of course she's going to save herself. And like she has mentioned over the last few weeks, she's going to get rid of Anika. Daniel and Anika make their final pitches, and they are very sad, but it's clear that Anika is a goner, and Claudia does end up running her out. Anika is someone who I felt like picked up on the game pretty quickly in some areas, but was very stagnant gameplay-wise in other areas. As a character, she definitely had her moments, though she's definitely not going to be one of the biggest stars of the season, but it was nice seeing a South Asian woman or person in general just really do well in the season and actually get decent screen time, unlike Helena last season. She was a decent presence in the season and definitely added stuff here and there, though yet again, I think she would have benefited more if there were live feeds and people probably would have seen more of her and would have gotten more invested into her, but we are just isolated because we weren't given that access to her and many of the other house guests. Claudia wins part 1 of the final HOH competition, and Ty wins part 2 of the final HOH. It is clear that nothing was going to stop the steamroll, and Daniel was dead in the water. Claudia wins the final HOH competition and evicts Daniel. Daniel was definitely a fun enough presence in the house, though you can definitely tell that they neutered his edit at various points, and they made him come off as a simp, especially earlier on in the season. He definitely had a better reach strategically than most of the others in the house guests, and he did have his fun moments here and there. Definitely one of the better players of the season, and will probably be one of the more remembered people of the season as well, once it gets down to it. At the same time, I also think he had relatively weak allies, and it's why his game didn't thrive as much as he wanted it to thrive. Overall, I enjoyed Daniel for what he is, and I do think he's a good player. Dan asks Claudia about her worst game move and how she bounced back from it, where she mentions that her social game carried her in the first half, and her comps carried her in the second half, but she mentions not having relationships in all areas. Jonathan asks Ty about playing with integrity and humility, where Ty answers yes, he did, since he kept his word to everyone and lied about nothing, though he's literally admitted recently, as I'm recording this, that he lied about three situations. And he has played with integrity and humility. Santina asks Ty about how he better represents the season over Claudia, and he mentions that his competitions and his overlooked slash undetected social game cost him to control things from the final six onwards. Hope asks Ty about what else he did outside of winning comps, and he mentions that his overlooked social game 
and mentions that people kept him off the block at the end, so he pretty much gave the same answer to Hope that he gave to Santina. Kuzi asks Claudia about a bunch of promises that she broke to her throughout the season, and asks why she would vote for Claudia, who consistently failed her. Claudia mentions core relationships and you have to play for yourself, so she made hard decisions, which got her to the end. Shania asks Claudia if she ran through all the options at the double, and whether it was a forced move or not, where Claudia mentions that she wanted to work with Ty by that point, and that her best chance at getting to the end was with him, though she did not want to take her out. Renee asks Ty about how he has trashed her and targeted her since week one, and why did he bother making a final three with her, where he mentions that he tried gaming with her, but she did not reciprocate it, but the final three that they made was genuine. Anika asks Claudia if using Ty as a crutch or being disloyal to her allies was a better strategy, where Claudia mentions that she did not use Ty as a crutch and she took him to the final two, as she won the final POV and H.O.H. of the season. Daniel asks Ty about explaining his social game in the final two weeks and how it got him there, and Ty mentions that he is naturally an introvert, but there are a lot of talkers who he would just listen to, which caused him to know where things were in the final nine, as he did the candy explaining with Hope, where he knew about the alliances before he was told it by Kuzi. In the final speeches, it seems like Claudia and Ty are honestly trying to out-identify politics with one another. Claudia mentions being a woman, how she was going to be underestimated, where she had a lot to prove, and having a strong social game while winning some of the most important comps in the season while not wanting to quit. And Ty mentions being a black man with a single mother, was judged based on how he dressed and talked, but he mentions being the biggest comp beast in the season where he saved himself and others, he was a lone wolf, and single-handedly destroyed two alliances, and mentions his overlooked and under detected social game. Ty wins the season by an 8 to 1 vote. I feel like from the beginning, people wanted Claudia to be something she was not. I think people wanted her to be this Amazon badass woman who took no names, but that just, just wasn't what she was. And it didn't help that she was presented as being one of the only people who saw through the guy's eyes early on. As a character, there really isn't much to say. She was just kind of bland and lukewarm. And as a player, I don't think she's bad, but she's not really good either. I do think that when push came to shove, she always voted, and I think that kind of explains how she got to the end and why she ended up losing, because while Ty was controversial in many ways, Claudia was just lukewarm and wasn't impressive in many facets either. Ty was inherently unlikable from the very beginning to the very end of the season. Though there were definitely moments where I did see his logic and point of view, it wasn't very honest, and I think that he played very personally and very vindictively throughout a lot of the season as well. And the lack of accountability that he showed on the season was very frustrating, though in his interviews he seemed to take more accountable about the moves he made. So maybe it was just an edit thing. As a game player, uh, he's a great competitor and I like that how he was cutthroat, but a lot of the moves he made really were um, sensical and actively did damage to his game, but he never really took accountability for how his actions caused him to be in the poor position he was in for a majority of the season. And it was mainly his competitions that caused people to kind of fold to him. Despite that, he is definitely one of the better players of the season. So that is the end of Big Brother Canada 11, and I think the season would have been more liked if there were live feeds. But the beginning and the very end just weren't very interesting, and the gameplay in general just wasn't very strong. And with the luck of feet, it caused us to not be as invested as the house guests. There are quite a few unconventional leaves. And it's definitely not one of the stronger seasons, though I don't think it's the worst season. It'll be interesting to see in a few days as I'm recording this if the show is renewed or not. If this ends up being the last season, I would definitely say it ended on November, but if it's renewed, I hope it would be something that they learn from and they take the time to improve Big Brother Canada 12. So of course I'm going to rank the BBCan11 cast as game players by the TS life I've established, 
and I will officially move on from BB Can. So I'm definitely planning on ranking all the pre jurors in BB Can, all the jurors, and all the end games, and then maybe making a complete gameplay ranking of all the house guests. And I'm also going to publish Big Brother 2 at the same time or very soon, since I watched that season and this season simultaneously, so expect that to come out soon. Thank you all for supporting me in this long journey. I can't believe I rewatched Big Brother Canada, and it was definitely an interesting one. Thank you all, and I'll be back with something soon. Bye!